Hey YouTube! So today, we're going to be building one of these hashing racks. Hey guys, Courtney from CD Exotics here and welcome back to my channel. And today, we're going to be building a hatching rack. Uh, so a couple things that you need to build this rack. Um, we're going to be building it out of half inch PVC. But all these measurements you can use on uh, melamine, you can use on plywood if you really wanted to. I don't recommend plywood. The half inch PVC is best, but it is a little hard to find. I'm pretty lucky I live near the beach, so my Home Depot carries it. Uh, last time I got even luckier and they cut it for me, but this time they wouldn't cut it. So I do have a little time lapse of me uh, cutting it. Because obviously, right now, everything is all already cut. And I did already route it. I did not do a time lapse of me routing it because uh, it's very messy. Looks like it snowed in my yard. It looked like it snowed all over me. So I was not going to try to film that. There's plenty of videos on YouTube if you really need to know how to route. It's not difficult. Basically, just uh, line up a straight edge and then route it's it's pretty simple uh but i did do a time lapse of me cutting the boards or the sheets so some materials that you need for this so obviously pvc you're gonna need a drill i use drywall screws these are number six and these are inch and a quarter so you want something that is not going to go too too deep but you want to make sure it's going deep enough for support and you, I also picked number six because they're um, smaller and they're not going to pop through if you get a little bit off. You need some heat tape. For this build, I used 10 foot of the four inch heat tape. I like to use the four inch heat tape um, just because sometimes I have a little bit of fluctuation in my room. I don't have a mini split out here at some point. I get a mini split maybe I'll start using three inch but I like using the four inch you're gonna want some CDs these are just for spacers you also need an empty tub that you're gonna use also to space and then you don't have to have one of these I've done several builds without one of these but these things are great you should get one it was like $12 and I can't believe that I was that cheap and I did not spend $12 sooner. And I'm probably gonna go buy a second one because it'd be easier to have two. But this is just a right angle clamp and I use it for my first, you know, when I'm attaching my legs to my top, just to make sure that I'm getting a good right angle. So here's my top piece. See, I did not route this one. And this one is actually an inch wider then my shelves. I do that because because I like to have it sit on top of the legs, that top shelf, because I feel like when you're stacking the racks, I feel like it gives it better support. All right, guys. So um, just gonna cut some of this PVC. Uh, last time I got lucky and Home Depot cut it on their saw. Um, I had them cut it down into pieces like this last time to bring it home and I just cut it in half here. Um, but they're really not supposed to. So Home Depot is, um, what they tell me is they're not allowed to cut the PVC with their saw. Um, so, I got an older gentleman last time, or my husband did, and uh, he got lucky and they cut it. But this time they wouldn't cut it. Uh, so I went ahead and picked up a couple sheets, um, and I'm gonna cut about, probably two sheets today. But I don't have a track saw, so I rigged up this here. I'm gonna show you how I use it, so I always get good cuts. So this is my first strip. Uh, I'm building a hatchling rack with the Reptile Basic tubs. So this is 15 and a half inches wide, and then I'm gonna cut it not quite in half, I think it's 
I think it's 23 inches. I'd have to check. Um, but right now, I'm just going to be ripping this way. So I'm going to slide that down a little bit. So right now, I just have all this laid out on uh, four by fours. And then I have this uh, two by four here because the ground's a little uneven. But I'm going to pull that out of the way. I'm going to put this four by four here. Okay. I'm going to unclamp these. So this is just a uh, piece of wood. I just tried to get the straightest one I could get. Um, you can buy a track saw. You can buy a lot of things. They're pretty expensive. I try and do stuff on a budget and you don't get much cheaper than this. I think this is like $2 and I can use the other half for something else. So clamps, these are pretty cheap too. It made a perfect cut on the other one I just measured. Cut was perfect, perfect and straight, uh, no issues. So I'm gonna show you how I do it. I'm trying to cut. 15 and a half. I'm going to show you how I do the first one because what I would do is just line it up with this cut board, but that doesn't show you guys how to do the first cut. So I'm going to measure out. I'm going to put a dot at 15 and a half. You got to pay attention to which side of your dot you're cutting on uh, when you mark it. And then I'm going to do another dot. For where I want my board to be at. And I want that to be at the edge of the saw. Because I'm cutting down, I'm using I'm cutting it on this side. So from the edge of the blade to the edge of the guide here is about an inch and a half. So I'm gonna mark that. I'm gonna go over here, do the same thing. So 15 and a half and 17. A little bit, it's smidgen less than 17. It's an eighth less than the 17 because of the uh, saw blade. So I'm gonna grab my board here, clamp. Now I want to have a little bit more hanging down at that end because that's the end I'm going to start with. And I want to make sure that my saw has support so I don't get crooked on the first part of my cut. And I want to have a little bit sticking out down here so I don't get crooked at the end. So I'm going to line this up. I'm going to check, make sure my 4x4s are supporting this. We're not under where I'm trying to cut. That wouldn't go too well. Okay. So I'm going to clamp those. And see, this is not going anywhere. I can run my saw down that quicker. But I'm going to measure here. Make sure that I am even on both sides. So I'm gonna adjust this a little bit. I'm not quite even. I'm off by a sixteenth. And now I'm even. Make sure your cord's not up in your way. Never a good day if you cut your cord. Okay, so you can see how I'm starting here. See how this is sticking out some, so I've got something. I can start a nice clean cut with it. Now you wanna make sure that your blade is lined up with your dots. Go ahead and make sure there's nothing underneath that you're gonna cut into. And that's it. That's how you uh, cut a nice straight edge.
So we've got our shelves already cut. These are 15 and a half inches and they are 23 inches long. And you can, like I said, you can see I already routed it. And another thing that you want to make sure you do, because I'm using a continuous piece of P tape, you want to make sure that when you route it, that on one side, you also cut out a section so that you can feed your heat tape through. You don't need to do it on both sides, but you do need to make sure you alternate. So the next shelf up would be cut out on this side because you're gonna be zigzagging back and forth. Okay, this, uh, the tubs I'm using are from Reptile Basics and it's a combo rack. So it'll hold a 23 quart tub, it'll hold an 11 quart tub, and it'll hold their eight quart tub which are the tubs, I like using all of those tubs. The 23 quarts sometimes are not in stock, which is kind of annoying, uh, but that's probably the least used size that I have just because I still have a bunch of 28 quart Sterilites. Um, but I do, I use the hatchling, that, that eight quart size. I put all my babies in that uh, right out of the incubator and they stay in that for a little while. And then you can grow up to a pretty big size in those 11 quart tubs. Um, I also like how long they are. Like I said they're 23 inches long, which is longer than the V18s. For me, the V18s are just, they're just kind of short and I feel like they outgrow them a lot quicker. And for the space difference, I would rather just go with these tubs. And the fact that, I mean, the V18s, you can get the V15s and stuff like that, but you're not fitting a hatchling very long in a V15. So I can usually go up to 200, 250 grams, uh, sometimes a little bit more. If they're not feeding great, I will keep them um, in those smaller hatchling tubs a little bit longer. But, you know, they, and they don't have cup holders. I, I think the new Freedom Breeder uh, FB5s are awesome. I love how they're ventilated. I just wish that they were the extra length that these are. Um, and it is kind of nice that the cup holder is not attached because then they can just kind of move it around. But anyway, this is the size shelf. This will fit all three. And then my legs. I have two smaller legs. These are for the front. These are five and a half inches 
each wide. And I end up, I do end up cutting off the bottom at the end. Uh, it's easier than trying to precisely measure. And these are seven inches. I go with seven inches because I want to make sure that I have room for my heat tape because I don't like it when the heat tape, I have this rack, I did it where the heat tape kind of sticks out the side and I got to thinking that I can't put racks next to each other when I do that. So you need to have, because you don't want the heat tape touching each other, so you need to have the heat tape inside the rack, that way you can save as much space as possible. I cut all of this out of one sheet. So one four by eight sheet will get you one of these combo hatchling racks and you will have a couple extra shelves left over. Um, so I end up, I think I got three sheets and I'm gonna be able to get four hatchling racks out of that. And the sheets are $78 each. So I'm gonna be, I, I was ordering the Reptile Basics racks um, and they're awesome racks but by building four of these myself, I'm gonna be saving $500. And you know, I could buy a decent female snake with that. So, and I don't mind building it. I have some spare time right now uh, with all of this quarantine going on. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so this PVC has a wood grain on one side. And the way I route it is so that the heat tape is on the side, it's smooth. So you just wanna make sure when you're doing your top that um, the top portion is the smooth side and the portion that's gonna go um, as like the lid for the snakes is the, the wood grain side. It doesn't really matter. Um, that's just the way I do it and I want everything to look uniform, so. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna build it upside down and we're going to have this top shelf be like this. So you want this sitting on top of here. Like I said, that's gonna put more of the support, spread it out. all clamped up. I'm going to put two screws in the top to hold it all together. This is not the most ideal table to be building this on, as you can kind of see but work with what you got. Once I get these legs on, this is the hardest part. Then I'm gonna flip it over and then this table will be great. So now it's gonna be a little bit of the harder part. Because these back legs are not gonna go flush with the back the way we did the front ones. Because you can see where we routed, we want to make sure that our leg lined up with that because we're trying to cover up our heat tape. And you can see here, I've got a little bit of extra space because these are gonna sit inside these legs. So I'm just gonna kind of mark here where the edge of my heat tape is. So I know to make sure I get my leg right there. But 
the hardest part of this is just getting it started. Once you get it started, it goes super quick. Um, you build the whole thing upside down. I'll do a, I'm not going to talk on that. I'm just going to do a full time lapse. That part's super easy. It's just getting all this, the prep work basically done and, and the initial starting is what's a little difficult. So, I'll grab my tape measure. Sometimes I just eyeball this, but probably measure. So my legs are seven inches. So means I'm gonna have about an inch on each side of the heat tape. Make it even, so I'll mark there. That way my legs are even on both sides. You want to be a little bit careful when it's still like this because it doesn't have anything supporting it other than these couple screws. So you just want to be careful with it. Of course, my marks are on the bottom side. You know, that's how I roll. channel for my heat tapes not on this side um, but I do try and get you know the screws all lined up uh, but you want to make sure that you're not putting your screw through your, where your channel is for your heat tape otherwise you're not gonna be able to run your heat tape through there just want to make sure you're not putting pressure down on this like when I'm holding it I'm, I'm not pushing down I'm just holding it tight to this because if you push down even though you have those spacers you're still gonna have some issues with your tubs not sliding good. And that I feel like is one of the biggest issues with the DIY racks, is just unevenness and the tubs not sliding well because you're not using a CNC. So if you just try and do some of these little things, it makes a big difference. Um, my tubs all slide great on that other rack that I built.
finished rack. These legs here, you can either leave them if you want some space underneath, if you're not planning on putting uh, casters on. I am going to be putting a base and casters on, so I'm actually going to take a saw and just cut these off, but you don't have to do that. Or you could have measured and gotten a little bit closer, but I know I was just going to cut them off at the end, and I'd rather not come up a little bit short. So you can see six high uh, it's still upside down still needs a heat tape but that's just weaving it through and uh, I use the the silver tape the aluminum foil HVAC tape that you use for heat tape I use that because my channels aren't always enough to sometimes they're a little bit off so I just tape everything down uh, but the channels make sure that your tubs don't rub on the heat tape. So, so that took me took me about half an hour, which isn't too bad. Um, I mean, obviously it takes longer. You know, the whole process is longer by the time you cut and route and everything. But the actual assembly does not take a whole lot of time. Like I said the key is just making sure that you take your time with it, and make sure you know you can see everything is lined up real nice. Um, I, you don't have to countersink or anything like that. This PVC is soft enough if you're just careful and you don't want to go too deep. But so if you're feeling intimidated on building your own rack, it's really not that difficult. Just got to make sure you got the right tools. Uh, I used a circular saw. If you're using melamine, then I would totally recommend getting that cut at Lowe's or Home Depot when you pick it up. It's easier to get home that way and that stuff is heavy I don't know if you guys have never ever used that but that stuff is really heavy um, and this rack is not heavy at all I mean I can like I can pick this rack up I can stack it on top of another rack by myself as long as it doesn't have snakes in it um, so yeah there's that build so make sure if you want to see more builds like this make sure you like comment subscribe let me know what you guys thought in the comments. I will put uh, I will put the dimensions in the description below. But make sure you tap that bell so you never miss an update.